Good afternoon, everybody. It is Friday, if you can believe it or not. It is day 10, and we are going to talk today about learning to learn again. What a concept, right? We have to learn all over again. We have to learn a whole new series of survival mechanisms and a whole new series of things that we are going to have to face over the next couple of 30 days, maybe even 60 now, as you've heard the, the changes maybe, <clears throat> excuse me, upwards of 10 to 12 weeks. So now we get to learn about all of that again. And yes, I finally did shave. <laughs> Took me a while, but I did it. Uh, I attempted to let that go. Not going to work. But the gray is still here. That's still coming back. So that's great. Awesome. Uh, feel free to you know, notice that. <laughs> but anyway, i uh, going to continue on a couple things. Yesterday, if you recall, I started the entire thing called um, Connection Trend. And it seems to be taking off pretty well. So enjoy that and connect with people in a whole new way and do it from a perspective of if you only have 30 days left to live, thanking the people now uh, because they may not be there. And that may include you. So what if we just did that? So yesterday I got to thank three dear friends of mine uh, and obviously my mother as well. Uh, but also too, uh, today I'm gonna thank an old high school buddy of mine. Uh, I don't, I, he clearly doesn't know this is gonna happen. Uh, I have not told him, but I'm going to, by way of uh, tagging him on this one, this is, post is done. Uh, <clears throat> I wanna thank a good friend of mine, Matthew Gomes. Matthew now lives in California and is a father of uh, wonderful children, has been married for several years. And Matt and I were very good friends uh, during high school. And for those of you who know where Apple Valley, California is, that's where I had the unique pleasure of going to high school. Um, after my mother and father felt that it was better for me to leave uh, Los Angeles because I was getting in a bit of trouble and it was uh, obviously not going to be long for my golf career. So nonetheless, Matt Gomes and I were very good friends. Now, Matt and I in, were a product of the 80s kids. I mean, we had uh, and more Matt than me, but we you know we had the long hair, quasi mullet and the, you know, the big two to like this and the high collars. But one of the things that was really cool is Matt was an impeccable dresser back then. And Matt was one of the first ones besides my mother that really caught me into fashion and how to really kind of dress a style. Now, obviously the style in the eighties is unique. So I use that term style pretty loosely, but Matt was my best friend, you know, and when, you know, remember when you were a kid and you're on the holiday break and you're on Thanksgiving or Christmas or wherever you were, you know, and you, you there's nowhere to go because everything was closed. Right. So Matt and I would always go out and ride bikes or, you know, um, cars or play games or whatnot and we just always hung out together and matt really you know was always there as a, a really good friend and we went through high school together and graduated together and matt's been very successful down in san diego i've kept in touch with him over the years and obviously we've seen each other in uh, a couple of the reunions and I, I think i think we've got one coming up this year of course i don't know if that's going to happen because of for obvious reasons but i think we have one coming up this year i'll have to do my math on it pretty quickly but it's getting up there right <laughs> uh but i want to uh, shout out to matt and to uh, thank him because uh, he really made high school really enjoyable, especially in the early years and freshman and sophomore years. And, and really introduced me to, you know, that it was okay to dress and be fashionable and be, still make it cool. And it was, you know, we were, he was a very popular uh, uh, young man. And uh, uh, hopefully I became one too. But we had this, you know, really group of friends and Matt and I were always good friends. So I want to say a shout out to Matt. Say thanks for being a great friend, Matt. Thanks for over the years uh, staying in touch and, uh, super proud of what you've become and what you've created down there in California and, and your marriage to your lovely wife and uh, obviously to your your kids. And Matt, uh, wherever you are in the world, uh, I know we haven't talked in a couple of months, but I just want to say thank you and reach out and say, you know, it's been fantastic all those years together and, uh, you know, hopefully your family's safe. So there continues the gratitude for me uh, going forward as I promised I would. And I'll hashtag Matt Gomes. He'll uh, show up in here. But I'm uh, moving on to some announcements. Um, many of you who are in the free jump, there's uh, over 200 of you now going through the process. Uh, for those of you who log in right now today in the next 48 hours, when you log in, there's going to be a special message from me. I'm not going to tell you what that message is, but I'm going to tell you, you're going to want to do it. You're going to want to do it. And you're going to want to take action. You're going to want to be a super jumper and you're going to want to take speed. And you're going to do it right now. So when you get a chance, click the link that's on the post there, jump in, register for the free jump. And we are adding, I have spent the last... I don't know, two days, uh, but definitely uh, all day today and all, uh, all night tonight, uh, adding more and more materials. So you, when you log in, uh, you'll get your intro videos. You'll see it right there in the carousel, but you'll also see the Beyond the Secret trailer is now going up and will be available uh, via that website. You'll be able to click the link and download it instantaneously. You'll have it available for 48 hours um, on behalf of the producers. That's what they've uh, agreed to allow us to do. So you'll see that there. And you'll also see the Rise, which is an old television show that uh, 
I used to be a host of many years ago. Um, and you get to watch those episodes. These are all part of the things that you're going to see when you log in. I'll check it out for you. Uh, also, too, as you see in the post, uh, I'm, at, I'm actually uploading as we speak a singing bowl meditation. And for those of you who don't know what singing bowls are, um, they are the bowls that you know have various sizes and, and vibrations. And their fundamental philosophy goes all the way back you know, to the Egyptian sleep temples, you know, going back to the Egyptian cultures and up into the modern day. And they are bowls that when, you know, either rubbed with a stick or uh, um, uh, hit, they create a vibration. That vibration will resonate at certain frequencies and certain of those frequencies resonate with our chakras. Now that can be anything from your root chakra all the way up to your crown. And this particular one is done by a very famous singing bowl artist. I had the opportunity to work with him a month ago and he allowed me to record this. This is a private session and these are original and they are only in the backside of the architect platform. Uh, it will be a free resource for you. The other ones will be up inside the jump once you see them inside there. <clears throat> Excuse me. And so I'm really excited about that. And I'll be getting some more materials from some of the other graduate architects that are out there. So there's a bunch of stuff going on in the background and it's in time for us to really learn to learn again, which is what we're talking about today. Now, for many of you, learning is equated with school. Now, here's the irony. Learning has very little to do with school. Learning is about learning. Now, isn't life in and of itself learning, right? Think about it. Who we were just 30 days ago and who we are now is radically different. And I don't mean necessarily everything about you in particular, but everything about our world is different. We're having to learn how to be connected in a whole new way. We're having to learn how to be alone together. We're having to learn how to, you know, quote unquote, not be so distracted, even though many of you are seeking distractions still because it was easier, wasn't it? And yet we're having to learn that being with ourselves sometimes is the most difficult thing to learn. And yet here is the irony of that entire comment. And you know, this is you can't outrun you. There's nowhere to go. And you are the single longest relationship you will ever have in your entire time here on planet earth. You may have been in long-term marriages, relationships, family dynamics, etc. That's all great. But at the end of the day, your single longest relationship is you, just you. I find it ironic and I've been guilty of this myself, you know, when I was younger and even to this day, I still have to uh, unwind things. Right. But when I was younger, it, I always found myself needing to be busy doing something distracting. I wasn't good enough. I wasn't moving fast enough. I never found myself in a, um, best way I would say this. I don't want to say comfortable, but content, a content state of being. Now, many of us are experiencing this in a whole new way, and it's showing up in forms of anxiety, showing up in forms of mild depression, um, fearfulness. Um, it is showing up in sleepless nights. It's showing up. They've already showed that in New York. Uh, I heard a statistic yesterday uh, evening that uh, domestic violence is on the rise by some 16 to 20 percent. So we're having to learn how to be with each other and starting with being with ourselves. And here's the irony. We never really learned it. <laughs> so we're having to learn to learn all over again. I mean, and, then, and here's the weirdest part. We're having to learn how to do that at some of us at, you know, uh, an advanced age or advanced journey of our time, myself being 49, if you can believe that. I know it's hard to believe. I can't even believe it. You know, uh, Matt and I graduated in 88. Figure that one out. Mm, right. So we're having to learn to do that again. Now, here's the question. When we embrace learning, I've noticed over the years of all the years of training architects and, and inviting people to become who they really are versus who they think they are. And the process that we do in the architect journey, both in architects and training and architecting mastery, is that many of us want to learn only the things that we want to learn. Now that's fine in and of itself with the exception of if we only want only learn the things that we want to learn, then we must spend the rest of our time learning how to not pay attention to the things that we really need to learn. We really need to learn to be more patient with ourselves. We need to learn to be accepting of ourselves. Yeah, that's a big one. We need to learn that it's okay. We need to learn that sometimes, you know, things don't work out the way you think they should. In fact, more often than not, it's not going to look anything damn thing close to what you think it should look like. In fact, it will probably not even so look so close to it that you'll be confused as heck how you got there. 
No, I've had that a few times. I can't speak for you, but maybe you have too, right? Well, I want to welcome everybody who's over here watching and those of you who are also through the watch parties. Um, many of the uh, graduate architects and AITs are on this call as well, and they're there for you. And we'll be doing a special thing in the back end. If any of those who would like to work with me directly, those of you who take uh, the, the step on the jump that's inside the login, which you have to look in to figure out what I'm talking about, uh, some of you are going to get a chance to work with me directly, right? No cost. I'm just going to give you a call. We're going to jam, right? To give you an idea what that looks like in the real world, before this entire thing came up, you know, I charge a thousand an hour for me to coach and work with me directly. So cool. So for whatever that's worth, if you want to put a value on it right now, it's just people talking to people in it. Okay. So now we get to learn to learn all over again. Hmm. How the hell do we do that? Well, for our part, at least in architect land, the new system is designed for you to do it through multiple choice. It's designed for you to do it in a way that you can track your learning and data and it's fun because, you know, I think it should be edutainment, right? It should be education and entertaining at the same time. And any architect who's gone through our system or our program and has graduated at any level, whether it's a jumper or an AIT or an architect in training or an architect master, they will tell you that you're going to get it in your DNA. It's got to be in your DNA because everything else is in your DNA that you do now, right? So it needs to be in your DNA, which means it has to have the emotional content to it. It has to be fun. Otherwise, learning sucks. How many of you remember going through middle school and high school and going, this just blows, man. I don't give a flying flip about this topic or that topic, but I have to take it because I've got to get enough credits to graduate. Okay, great. You know what's really cool about architect is the one topic you get to learn about is you. Wherever you go, every single lesson, every single hour, every single quiz, every single piece of content, television show, film, meditation, uh, hypnotherapy program, yoga class, lecture, talk, everything that's in the back end is all about you. Now, here's the question that I want to ask all of you, and please pop in the chat because I can see some of you on the other side over there, is, hey, I'm just really curious. How come we are so afraid to learn about self? Now, here's the irony. We're willing to put so much of our time and effort and learn about a bunch of other mindless stuff that really doesn't mean anything. And now more than ever, and we're barely into this, boys and girls, so buckle up and hold on for the ride. I hate to be the bearer of bad news, but for those of you who think that this is going away like tomorrow, whew, time to wake the F up. It's not. It's a minimum of 30 days. And as of the announcements that were going on this morning in the back channels that I've been hearing about, we're talking upwards of 10 weeks, 10 weeks, family, do the math on that. That is two and a half months. It's time we start embracing learning about ourselves as the most important thing on the planet. Because if and when this thing changes, whatever the normal was that we came from is gone. It will never be the same. It's impossible. It's gone. No different than the person you were a year ago, high school, 20s, 30s, different person. Even the space suit, your body looks different. I know I you know, got a few extra wrinkles, got some gray hair going on, got less hair than I used to have back when Matt and I used to have a boatload of hair back in high school. So, doesn't it stand to reason that learning to learn again would realistically become the most interesting thing on the planet? Now you get to ask yourself in architect land, you'll be introduced to them on the, on the second day of the jump. And ultimately when you get into architects and training that your guardians, right? Those are those thoughts that mess with you all the time. And I promise you, you probably have 10 times more than you're really aware of. And now you're aware of them even more than you want to be because we don't have anywhere to go to distract ourselves like we're used to. We used to be able to distract ourselves with all kinds of mindless stuff. That's all gone and it might even get tighter, right? You know, I can speak for the United States. There are several places there are rumors that it's getting <laughs> like you can't even go out. You know, the way we connect, we're wearing masks now and wearing possibly face masks, our social distancing. Hmm. Isn't it time that learning to learn again becomes a very powerful tool? Learning to learn about ourselves. And I don't mean learn about yourself like, hey, gee, I like the color blue or gee, I'm six foot one. No, those are statistics. I'm talking about learning to learn about the things inside of you that you've chosen to ignore. You know, what's really cool about the architects is it really takes a different approach. And what's something I'm very proud of over the, the 30 years we've been in this space together is that we don't come from a place of we have all the answers. In fact, I'll tell you point blank, I don't have a damn answer for you. And anybody who tells you they do is full of shit. 
For those of you who have kids watching, I apologize for the language, but it's true. Okay. What we do have is a step-by-step -step system, series of questions, quizzes, an entire experience in over 70 hours of training to become an architect master. It's dang near a PhD, if you will, to go through um, and learn about the most important thing that they never taught you about. You see, when back in, when Matt and I were in high school, they didn't teach us about how the mind really worked. They didn't teach us, barely, they barely taught us how to balance a checkbook if we're gonna be honest with each other. They didn't teach us how to make a decision and a choice and understand the difference between the two. They didn't, under, they didn't teach us how to change a habit so that exercise became enjoyable again. They didn't change us, uh, teach us how to deal with heartbreak or uh, uh, they didn't teach us how to deal with extreme pleasure. They didn't teach us how to be, we deal with the uh, addictions that we create, sex, drugs, rock and roll. Right? They didn't teach us anything of value. They relied on our parents to do it. Now, in my generation, I was a latchkey kid. Right? So my parents were divorced by the time that I was nine. Right? And so, you know, no disrespect to them. You know, uh, so I spent a lot of time, you know, on my own. And you know, if you know anything about golf, um, which we'll be talking about golf going through this next thirty days, by the way. Um, it's a lot of, you know, by yourself time. But even in golf, golf never really teaches you except from the experience itself. Meaning I already had the experience and then I've got to go back and learn, which is how we tend to approach life. Wouldn't it be interesting if we can actually learn about ourselves first and then they have the experience that we want to have versus having the experience and experience or whatever it is, and then having to pivot and go back and learn. Do I like that? Do I not like that? What do I want to pivot about it? Just an experience. Do I just flow the way? Because then we realistically, we're approaching life from a perspective of being like a leaf in the wind, just floating around. Stuff happens and we react to it, right? Or we flip it around and go the other way. Learn about myself. Learn about what I really believe. Learn what's really important to me from going forward. What do I want to experience? How do I want to feel? How, why do I think the things that I think, <laughs> you know, how do I stop thinking the things that I think? How do I change my belief structures? How do I deal with disappointment? How do I deal with letting myself down? How do I deal with not being everything I thought I was going to be? And how do I deal with if I get sick with COVID-19? What makes Architect an interesting tool, and I've gotten a lot of questions from uh, people. Thank you for uh, uh, emailing in. And also, too, by the way, once you're inside the Architect platform, you can put your own profile up. You can talk to each other. It's all contained. You don't have to be out here on Facebook or Instagram or LinkedIn. You're all contained. It's a beautifully contained ecosystem. You can ask questions. Our CRM is there, our, our customer relations management software. We can text you, we can email you, but also on the inside, you can talk. There's other architects there who have gone through the system, who are going through the system right now, who are changing their lives and they're going to learn. So isn't it time we jumped into a community where we can learn to learn again, but learn in a way as opposed to pass fail. You're not good enough. You didn't make the grade. You suck. What if we've made learning a fundamental hierarchy of value of interest. And I did that by changing the topics. You know, when we went through high school and, and middle school and even somewhat university, we had to take a bunch of general ed. I don't what the I don't need general ed. I need specific education, right? I never understood that. Right. I for example, one of my classes that I never understood, and I say this respectfully out there to all the wonderful, wonderful geologists, I don't understand why in the heck I had to take geology as a class. Okay, I get that there's dirt that I play golf on and there's layers of rock and there's crust and there's the tectonic plates and I understand all that. But I understand that now because I went and chose to learn it later. But when I was in uh, my first year at Arizona State, I hated geology. I couldn't stand it. One, because it's hotter than heck outside. Let's just start with that. Two, it had zero interest in what I was interested in, or at least I thought I was interested in. So wouldn't it be interesting if we approach learning now while we're sequestered and we're quarantined and we're under government regulations and you know and things are going to get a little bit weirder as of this morning when i got my my update from our teams in the philippines you know the philippine president as an example made an, a, a statement today that said hey i'm going to be enforcing this quarantine and this lockdown and i have given the permission to the police to use lethal force if they feel threatened and quote unquote i'm just going to shoot you dead quote, end quote. You can look up the article. Read, don't take my word for it. I saw it and I was shocked. And I was like, holy crap. 
And again, where one does it, many other may do it. Now, I'm not saying the United States or Canada or those things, but, but they may. And who knows? Civil unrest has happened before. Not, we're not unused to it. So isn't it time we start looking at learning from a really interesting perspective? And I say interesting because the most interesting on the planet right now is you because you are stuck with your ass. <laughs> you ain't going nowhere, whether you like it or not. And if you choose to go somewhere, you run the risk of ending up somewhere you don't want to be, which is we're back to experience reaction. So we're not really architecting our lives. We're reacting to our life. Well, if you're constantly reacting to your life, you're in a constant state of anxiety. Oh my God, am I going to feel this? What's going to happen? I don't know what to do. I'm reacting. Oh my God. You're constantly in this state of anxiety. And that's how we start developing phobias. Like agoraphobia, ironically, used to be one of the large fears in the world. Bet you it's going to change and reverse itself, right? I believe it's called angoraphobia, which is the reverse, which is the, of small places. If my memory serves, right? It could be wrong there. But nonetheless, what about a safe place to connect? What about a safe place to have questions asked, but not answered from the perspective that we're right, you're wrong? Because right and wrong are constructs of values, right? So learning to learn again now becomes an elective choice. Now, remember when you were in school and even in high school, but definitely in university grade, you had these things called electives. You elected to choose these classes and you had some say in which ones you chose. Not all of them are great, but at least you had a say, right? You got to choose the direction that felt like an experience you wanted to create. The difference here with the at architect is all of it is elective. Now, yes, you go through the modules and you learn and you get your certificates and you get your badges. It's all gamified, so we know, and it's all data-driven. So we are in the background as you go through your tests, making sure that you learn the information, your architect's advisor's there to help you. But if nothing else, you don't have to do any of that. You can just sit in the community and talk because damn, wouldn't that be interesting to have a place to just talk and have someone be able to, you know, give you a quality engagement that isn't just like, hey, how are the kids doing? You know, where they used to go to school, what line of work are you in? And that's great. Those are surface level kind of conversations, but as opposed to, hey, how are you sleeping at night? What's the number one thought that runs through your mind like a splinter that you just can't quite get out that constantly nags at you? Have you ever asked yourself, what if I were to just go ahead and relieve myself of the belief structures that I'm not good enough or that I'm never going to make it. I'm not successful enough. I'm not good looking enough. I'm not pretty enough. I'm not whatever enough, right? Because we're all going to go through this wonderful thing called the deconstruction of vanity. Because now, at least in most places, you know, I know mostly in the United States, all the quote unquote non-essential, which by the way, is just one of the strangest words I've ever heard. But if you actually think of the subcontext of that language, non-essential, you're not essential enough to stay open. Damn, if that doesn't smack you right in the teeth. Now I understand the concept logically, family, I, I get it. But if you look at the subtext of that language, you're not essential enough to stay open, to serve, to feed your family, to continue doing. That's some deep stuff when you really sit back and look at it. And it's a really strong message that goes all the way back. And that's when I think back in middle school and in high school, when Matt and I went to school together, uh, you know, you, and everybody's had, you know, one or two of these teachers that said, you're not living up to your full potential. One of my favorite ones, living up to your full potential. Well, how the hell do you know my full potential based on what a grading system that someone taught you? You have no idea what my full potential is. Imagine the person who told Bill Gates that, <laughs> Or Steve Jobs, you know, hey, you're not living up to your full potential, Bill. You dropped out of university. Yeah, you're right. I'm just one of the richest men in the world and changed the world. But yeah, right. I didn't live up to my full potential. So thanks. I'm going to go do it somewhere else where your judgment of what you think I should and should not be doesn't apply. The only thing that's interesting to learn is what my judgment of myself is. How am I doing that? Where is that coming from? And how do I learn to change it on command? That is a skill worth learning, is it not? I mean, I know many of you are wondering, going, oh, come on, Travis, it can't be that simple. Says who? Isn't that a belief structure too? It can be that simple if you want it to be. The question is, are you ready to jump? What else do you have better to do? You know, I'm, uh, I was uh, doing a, a, a community call last night and a go live. And one of the things I brought to you know, people's attention was, you know, nobody's self-made. And this illusion that you know people are self-made and so it's just total bullshit. We're all in the people business. And now more than ever, haven't we learned we're in the people business? And I don't care what business you're in. 
you're in the people business, whether you're online or offline, brick or mortar, don't matter because of, uh, you know, last I checked, again, the buildings aren't doing diddly squat. They don't get affected by this virus. The animals of the wild out in the Serengeti are doing the same thing they've always been doing and could care less what you're doing. And if you really think about it, all of these businesses, these non-essential businesses that were there are dependent upon one thing, people. But if we don't understand people, starting with ourselves, isn't it time that we learn to learn again, but making it in a way that is about the topic that we really have avoided most of our life, which is ourselves. So in response to that, as always, you can click the, the link right there. It is a register for free, right? The, the link is right there. It's architecting360.com forward slash register hyphen free. You register into the platform, you get unlimited use of the resources that are there for you. There are the first three days of the jump. There is meditations there. There's self-confidence, self-esteem programs, things to help you deal with this right now, experientially. And then when you log in right now, you're going to get a free message from me. And for those of you who actually take that experience and go to that next level, it's going to open you up to some of the episodes of The Rise. You're going to get over 30 different audio programs, the full jump in and of itself, and a whole lot more. And for what I'm interested in is I'm interested in those who want to learn to become architects in training. So I'm putting out the call. I'm going to be fearless about it. I don't care what the times are right now. This is the time to learn. And so we ha are taking only 1,000 AITs this year. And I've already had my first come in in the first week. We have 996 spots to go. We're doing financing options. We're going to make this easy. So there is no more excuses for you not to learn to learn again. Because when you come out on the backside of this, boys and girls, whatever it's going to be, Again, you're either going to react to the experience and then have to go figure it out, or you're going to create what you want to go forward and go forward in doing that. You've got films, television, audio programs, books, everything's in the background, and most importantly, the architect and training system. And the deepest part of it all is the architect community in and of itself. Architects around the world right now. You can, When you go into that back platform, you can chat with them, you can talk with them, you can set up reflection sessions with them. It's all there. And set it up in a way just by simply saying, okay, because it's time I learn to learn again. Because I promise you, in the next 30 days, you're going to watch all the crap you could watch on Netflix. You're going to watch all the watch you can watch on Amazon. You're going to run out of rental movies to watch. And you can only play the, the video games for so long until your fingers get blisters. And then what? Isn't it time now, more than ever, to love learning about yourself again? and learning to learn about the most important relationship you'll ever have, which is you. Because remember one thing, and I hate to say this, but it needs to be said. None of us are gonna get off this planet alive. And now more than ever, we're all gonna face our worst fears over the next 30 days. And those 30 days, those, th those fears are gonna range from everything from the simplicity of actually contracting the virus ourselves and having to face in and of itself that, to someone we know, to the financial strains that we're dealing with on economics around the world, our spiritual journey, our connectivity. So if nothing else, isn't it time we learn to connect with ourselves again? Because the worst case scenario, you always can be happy being with yourself because no matter where you go, you're stuck with you. Okay, boys, girls, that's learning to learn again today. You can click the link. Thank you for all of you showing up. I will respond to your, your comments and questions over there. Thank you for those of you pushing the watch party out to the thousands of you watching this uh, around the globe. Thanks for listening. Remember, you are the architect of your life, and it's time that you get to architect it going forward with the skills and services that we're here to help you do. Love and appreciate y'all. Take care. Bye-bye.